was that with the last case from South Korea? Does it work? Can you hear me? We can hear Hello. You. Yeah. We can hear you uh, very well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you start? You can start. Good morning, everybody. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jeong Choi from South Korea, Severance Cardiovascular Hospital. <laughs> Jung Sung Kim, as an adult, uh, the, the counterpart of uh, me in my hospital, is a structural interventionist is with me. And I am Kim, uh, congenital interventional cardiologist is also here. We, uh, first of all, uh, we are gonna present the case. The Dr. Chang Shin Kim, uh, our senior interventional fellow, will uh, present the case. Dr. Kim, please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We'll start with case with ASD. The patient is a 58-year-old female with a body weight of 58 kilogram and height of 164 centimeter. ASD second was diagnosed during preoperative evaluation of left radius fracture and referred to our institute for device closure. She has no underlying medical conditions and no current medication. She has intermittent palpitation and mild exertional dyspnea, NIAC class two. There's a grade two sisling murmur at the left upper stunner border. Her chest x-ray shows mild cardiomegaly. A case shows sinus rhythm with a heart rate of 72 BPM and incomplete RBBB. There's asymptomatic PACs in ambulatory ECG monitoring. Four chamber view shows right side volume overload. Short axis shows good LV systolic function. RV inflow view shows mild to moderate TR. TT shows ASC secondum with a diameter of 18 to 24 millimeter with a septal aneurysm. The subcostal view showed an IVC rheum of 15 millimeter and SVC rheum of 22 millimeter. Four chamber view shows mitral rheum of 23 millimeter and posterior rheum of 14 millimeter. Parsner short axis view showed aortic rheum deficiency. The CT scan shows ASD second measured 24 by 18 millimeter and no coronary artery disease. So, the, you finished the present, presentation? Yeah. Okay. So any, any questions or comment on the case? Are there any questions from the auditorium? Which device you choose? <laughs> okay. The, we have done some hemodynamics. Dr. Ayong Kim will explain the hemodynamics. Yes, we, uh, we checked the QPQS and mean pulmonary pressure before. It showed uh, mean pulmonary pressure as 20 millimeter mercury, a mild pulmonary hypertension. So, Peter, uh, in 58 year old uh, female patient, uh, do you uh, anticipate any some uh, uh, concern in this patient? No, I, I no, do not. no. That's straightforward. Uh, and pick, put a device in, and that's it. No, uh, you do a, a balloon sizing first, or not? Yeah, well, actually, I'm uh, uh, the default uh, is a balloon sizing. Uh, 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 different from KG there. Okay. So I'm gonna show you the intracardiac echo finding. Can you see the, do you see the, the intracardiac echo? Yes. Yeah, it is a short axis view of intracardiac echo. As you can see, there is a uh, retro aortic rim deficiency. Yeah. You can see some flimsy posterior rim there. And if uh, tilt uh, a little bit, uh, to the long axis view, you can see uh, no defect in of oh, patient is moving up a little bit. But there is some some view, uh, the, especially the near the IBC, the rim is not uh, not sufficient, 
And but uh, in the posterior uh, uh, septum, you can see the some flange root. So the, the defect uh, size was stuck there. Okay. I see Peter Ebert in the audience. Do you have uh, any ideas or consideration in uh, adults closing ASDs, for example, this 58-year-old lady? <laughs> no, I, I know what you mean. Um, I think this should be not a problem in this uh, lady because she does not have any uh, hypertension. She has no uh, coronary heart disease. She is not that old. Um, the defect is relatively huge. I think probably it's difficult to close this defect without the aortic rim and this floppy dorsal rim. But with regard to left ventricular restriction, if you uh, think like th things like that, I wouldn't expect this in this lady. Okay, the size is about uh, 22 millimeter. Uh, I would like to ask Teiji, which device, what size you put it in? So Jay, uh, uh, this is Hide from Tokyo, Japan. So yep. uh, good to see you. And uh, 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 Teiji is not gonna be here. Uh, he, he, he's a little bit late because of the other uh, conference. So I'm gonna, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, I'll answer the, your question. So. I think mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, use uh, any ki kind of device like uh, uh, Amplata or uh, like uh, Ocultec or Goa in this particular uh, patient uh, or anatomy. So mm -hmm. if I choose the... Uh, Not Goa. Oh, I see, in, in mm -hmm. your country, okay. Mm -hmm. So how about uh, using a uh, 27 uh, uh, Ocultec device? Or uh, I think uh, bottom line is um, uh, you, uh, we must do the uh, balloon sizing because the, uh, we can see the very free uh, uh, atrial septal aneurysm, prominent uh, septal aneurysm. So, and then uh, we're gonna uh, decide the size. Then I in this patient, uh, you you wouldn't uh, do the balloon size? I, I will. Well, why? Why, uh, because, uh, <laughs> you know, the uh, only the measurement is uh, uh, not sometimes uh, not tell the uh, truth. So we, indi we need, the, uh, if the uh, uh, posterior rim is uh, sufficient, uh, or not to uh, grab the uh, disc or not. Okay, the, how about Teiji? Oh, so that, that, I, 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 that is what I said, uh, uh, Teiji is not, not here now, so. He oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Um, the Teiji is uh, not, Teiji and Joko Wang is not in the, the well, usually they do not balloon size, so I'm gonna do the balloon size according to the Hida's uh, the recommendation. Give us one uh, minute. Uh, who would do a balloon sizing in this setting, in the audience? Who would not? So the majority, I think, would do. Would do. Yeah. But usually, the is a half and half. N not this time. Yeah, maybe due to the, the posterior rim uh, is the flimsy, but uh, I'm gonna show you some unanticipated yeah. finding in this patient. Yeah, even it's not uh, for the size of the defect, it's uh, for the orientation of the atrial septum that might help you in the end to place, to proper place the device. Yes. Blood pressure, please, camera. Blood pressure. Polygraphy. What kind of balloon is it? What size? Uh, this is 34 millimeter uh, cocoon balloon. You can see the end of the pressure is just seven or something. Seven, six. So I'm gonna advance the, the balloon, and you can see the increase of uh, and every end diastolic pressure to 25 or 30. And please measure the waist. So what's gonna do? Right, so it's 24 millimeters. 
It is mm -hmm. uh, about 24, 20. or, yeah. Yeah, yeah 24, did you, did yeah. Did you ever say as a comment? I think it's a good idea to have this end diastolic pressure measured, but um, it would be even more informative if we had the left atrial pressure directly. Um, so I don't know whether this is stiff enough, the, the balloon is stiff enough, but if you could measure the pressure through um, the balloon without a wire, then, um, because I would like to know um, how high is the V-valve, so during ventricular contraction, what happens then with the left atrium? Um, normally, if you have a restriction, you have V-waves uh, uh, who are, which are uh, much higher than these 20 to 30 uh, of the end diastolic pressure. Or so, uh, what, what we could do, um, we could have the mitral valve inflow um, with unoccluded balloon and with, uh, with unoccluded defect and with occluded defect to see whether the inflow, the A and A wave, the E and, e and A wave um, change significantly. Uh, actually, that, that is not the usual practice, uh, Peter, uh, because uh, the, the LV endosolic has been uh, long, has long been uh, the uh, indication of uh, mask type restriction or not. I, I agree with you that in that some balloon, uh, they takes uh, some uh, some volume inside the LA and may uh, some alterate uh, some physiology uh, hemodynamic. However, in this patient, I think uh, it could be uh, interpreted as a mask type restriction. So, but Jay, uh, uh, sometimes when we are uh, balloon sizing, the uh, uh, LA pressure or uh, LVEDP is going to be uh, increasing too much. So once uh, we uh, deploy that uh, double disc, I think uh, uh, it's going to be okay. It's not usually L, uh, LA pressure is going to be uh, elevated. Immediately after the, the, the implantation, there is uh, some uh, flow, residual flow through the me wire mesh. Is it ah. there? I Not there. Barat uh, showed us some case from Japan. I, I don't know, this is Hide's case or Tei's case, I don't know. But uh, they put the valve, uh, do they put the, the device, and even though the hemodynamic test, the balloon test, the, the, it, the L, uh, LA pressure, uh, maybe at that time, uh, permanent rich pressure increased. However, they put the valve, the, the device, then they found that the, uh, L, the permanent wedge pressure is acceptable. So due to the, the flow through the wire mesh immediately after the implantation of the device. So we can expect that, but uh, I think uh, there's some fenestration which could be spotted close uh, uh, with the time may be uh, a better option. So, any other comment? Yeah, uh, I, I agree. So, but um, uh, how, how big uh, should be? it should be? I think uh, it's going to be around uh, 8 millimeter. Is that correct? Uh, 8 millimeter is uh, spontaneous closure may not achieved. So, about 5 millimeter is in the most of the cases, uh, spontaneous closure may occur. So, my practice is uh, if uh, the pressure elevation is not so serious, then uh, two or four small holes, or uh, maybe it may sustain, expected to sustain for months, then maybe a five millimeter fenestration. Okay. Hi, Chiyo. So Before yeah. you continue, uh, this is MC here from Malaysia. Uh, usually we have a floppy septum. We would like to inflate the balloon and see on TE how the floppy, uh, floppy septums behaves. You know? Yeah, I, the, you, you mean the show me? The show, show the, the, would, would the it be all right squeezing if you show of... The, yeah, TE of the s floppy septum on through inflation of the balloon. And so oh, the the actually we have uh, only 10 more minutes. So <laughs> MC in may be not practical at this moment. Okay? <laughs> yes. Okay, so let's continue. The camera, this side, table. This side, oh. yeah, yeah. 
Can you see the device? Yes. Can you see? Yeah, yeah this yeah. is cocoon device, 24 millimeter. Cocoon device known to be uh, one of the softer and uh, so um, softest or the lightest device. So uh, this uh, this is uh, the softness comes from the some uh, electro polish of the nitin wire and some uh, removal of uh, nit uh, nit nit oxide layer and some nano platinum coating. So I have already made some fenestration here, but at this time I didn't suture each side of the, the fenestration because I. Uh, anticipate the spontaneous closure in, in the future with uh, the, some uh, follow-up. Okay, can you see the fenestration here? Yes, clearly. Okay, I'm gonna put this device and uh, see what happened in the, the LV industrial pressure, okay? So Jay, uh, l let us know the size again. 24 millimeter. 24. Uh, we uh, three we compound in three methods, echo measurement and uh, the angel measurement and the uh, size inflating method. Okay. Someone help me. <laughs> would would anyone in the audience uh, use a device without fenestration? There are some, yes. The majority would use a fenestrated device, so. Silent majority. So majority use a fenestrated or not fenestrated? The only some would use a not fenestrated. Okay, okay. Majority would, I think. There are two Peters, so the, you are Peter Jartner, right? right? Peter Jartner, right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Peter I Jartner, what, what would you use, a fenestrated or not fenestrated? <laughs> Good question. I I think I would not use a not fenestrated. So. Okay, the other Peter. <laughs> Peter. The other Peter would do another thing. They would uh, put the patient on uh, diuretics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, of course, of course. Yeah, that is very important. And come back diuretics and and, next day or and AC inhibitors. Yeah. Uh, maybe, but the, uh, uh, I measure the uh, pressure. Uh, after device placement, and if it is acceptable, then I'm gonna uh, uh, close this defect with this uh, device and then use uh, the diuretics and AC inhibitors. Okay. One thing is that this patient is no more tensive, no hypertension, but uh, because the patient is very nervous now, the, the patient has a very high blood pressure. So that's uh, one of the reason of the, the more exaggerated uh, the every mask, every restriction maybe. Possibly. Okay. So regarding uh, the medication, I think uh, I would recommend the SGLT2 inhibitor uh, for this particular patient. Okay, thank you, Hide. Please uh, send the uh, text me with the uh, accurate dosage mm -hmm. after the session, okay? Okay. The bus is ready. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna remove everything. Flush out. Can you see? Flush. 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 Okay. Is it eleven French long sheets? French. Nine. Ten, ten French. Uh, ten. Can you see the echo and floral at the same time? Yes. Yes, okay. Oh, it's already prolapsed. Thank you. Let 
again collapsed. Oh, it's too small. Oh, because of the posterior phalange septum. So now you may need a 27, right? Or a little bigger. Uh, actually, the sometimes the, the uh, my my policy is uh, to put uh, put in uh, the smaller device as small of a device as possible. So sometimes I change the device size. The Korean insurance uh, the health insurance company is covering the. If I use the different size, then they cover. So patients should have uh, the device lifelong. So I think if possible. A smaller device uh, maybe carries less risk of uh, long-term thrombosis or something. Okay, this is small. Okay. Then 26 millimeter device. Okay. Well, this is very unusual. Among my more than the uh, three thousand cases, maybe this is this kind of a changing the device size is very unusual. It's just too small. Right. Think uh, okay. This uh. Retry ultra green is not caught, I think, but what do you think? Hide. Is that because of the septal malignment? They didn't spray around the aorta? Uh, we, we didn't leave uh, this uh, side because uh, uh, we need to uh, catch the, uh, as you see, the uh, 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 retro aortic rim is going to be a little bit shorter. I think uh, we need to make uh, a shape in this particular. Uh, uh, so. Uh, uh, actually, the spray around in the aorta may uh, the, has been postulated uh, as one of the, the uh, mechanism of erosion. So, but no, I don't know. So, I, I know that uh, many of uh, the Japanese doctors uh, the prefer the pinching on the, the uh, aorta, uh, aorta uh, rather than pinching on the aorta, spray around the aorta, prefer the spray around the aorta. Yeah, w when we are using the ampullator device, I think uh, yeah, just pinching is gonna be uh, okay. But uh, when in this particular uh, patient, um, the uh, posterior uh, rim is already flimsy. I think uh, I think it, it it doesn't work. Yeah, maybe the I mean the, the two opposing rims, especially the retroaortic rim and the posterior rim, was very floppy. That made the effective diameter of the defect was quite large. Maybe we can put a yeah, However, you can see that the f effect of fenestration beautifully here, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think there's a s certain tendency here to use a bigger device. Who would use yeah, a bigger device? Who would use a bigger device? 26. Many. Uh, who would stick with this device? Just two. I, I think that the bigger device may be safer. Yes, I think I think you need more stability around the aorta. Yes, Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially pushing, then it is. Uh, yeah. The other people I would use twenty-eight. Twenty-eight, uh, maybe uh, the an option, but, but have I have to move to move to twenty-six first. Okay, Peter. Can I ask a quick question? It's Gareth Morgan over here on your on your to Gareth, your right. To your right. To your right. To your right. To your right. Hey. I, I just wonder whether or not, if, if there's reasons to try and keep this device and not upsize, whether um, a balloon deployment might help to stabilize the left disc on the aorta and might allow you to just make sure that you can't get a splay on the aorta and use this device. I, I think I probably would make a bigger device, but if there's a good reason to try and keep this device and not go to one bigger, putting a balloon in and using a balloon deployment technique might allow you to stabilize it across the aorta. Just wondering. Yeah, I think uh, the, it's a good idea. However, I think uh, that I, I used uh, the proper technique to uh, locate the device in the right place. So I think uh, that the balloon assisted uh, the, the technique uh, and the redeployment may not uh, have any any difference. 
So you see the device now? Yeah. See or not? We see it. What cheese uh, yeah. did you use? What cheese dice? Uh, 26. It may be a time consuming procedure, but uh, I, I would like to move to 26 first. Mm -hmm. And then if it is still too small, then and then I'm gonna uh, move to 28. How many minutes do I have? Uh, some. <laughs> Peter, you are you're not good. Don't don't cut your fingers. So you you're going to do the uh, umbrella sizing, right? I mean, you started with 24, now at 26, and the next will be 28. Yeah, and actually, the one bigger size uh, uh, have worked in all of my experience. Sometimes if uh, the, uh, I think uh, when I proctoring uh, in uh, another hospital, they tailed the septum, then uh, he, it didn't work. So we looked for the, the cause and I found uh, they tear the, the septum. Okay. Load again. If uh, if you if the patient have uh, the, some significant problem with hypertension and the uh, reason for the, the making fenestration is uh, uh, maintaining the sustainable fenestration because of the primary artery hypertension, unpredictable after closure. And uh, I'm gonna make uh, at least eight millimeter uh, with uh, some suturing or four site of uh, two site in the L LA disc and two site in the RA disc. And then uh, it may be sustainable. So uh, Jay, you, you use a 26 French um, uh, sheath uh, to make a five millimeter hole. That's correct? Yeah. Yes. Problem waste was 24, but that's not interesting. What do you think, Dr. Kim? Mm -hmm. Dr. Kim is not answering. <laughs> Does that metalignment cause some? Um, I think that the IBC rim is actually. Mm -hmm. In some view, very short. Yeah, there yeah, may be some additional IV stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still, yeah. yeah. The AOT rim is a little bit. Yes, yes, yeah, it is. Now, now, yeah. Okay. And uh, what about the LB endosteric pressure? Is acceptable? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think so. Five. What do you think, Hide? Yeah, uh, I, yeah, it's so beautiful. And mm -hmm. and Peter Jatra and Peter Ebert, what what do you think? To me, it looks good. Okay, Peter Ebert. With regard to the pressure, it's great. With regard to the stability okay. of the device, I have no feeling. I don't know the device. Um, um, yeah, so if you say it's good, try it. We want okay. to see. Okay, and can I release the device? It looks far better than the, the last. Yeah. Okay, can I release the device? I'm waiting for your permission. Who would not release the device? No, everybody would. 
Okay, maybe you can mm -hmm. just have a view at the iliocranial view. Just to see the spleen before it leaves. Sorry, mm -hmm. who is talking? Yes, iliocranial. Yeah, I'm gonna make uh, some angiography after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wire, wire, please. And show sheets. Yep. Purchase and Bowman, Can we have the echo a little bit bigger? Echo bigger, please. Echo bigger. So you can put it. So you can put it. If you can uh, increase the gain of the echo, it can be better, I think. 2D gain, increase 2D gain, please. Thank you. Okay. Looks uh, a little bit more bulkier than it was initially placed. Keep all them, please. Uh, someone wants to see the LAO cranial view, so I'm going to show you LAO cranial view. Okay. Wait a bit more. I don't know the reason why the 24 millimeter collapsed, but to me, yeah, okay, ready? Yeah, looks nice. The level base, yeah, done well, very well aligned with some radiation. Right. This looks good. Yes, thank you. So, uh, so any, any comment from the auditorium? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I thank you for this brilliant case and uh, very well done. Thank you very much.